In this session, I will go through how to get rid of those fireflies. When working with glass or metal or something else that is reflective, Blender will have a hard time dealing with all those bounces and you will easily end up with fireflies. So we need to know a few things how to get rid of them. If you look at the top image right now, I have a few glass objects and as you can see, some of those are black. So if you get black glass, it means that you have too few bounces on transmission. And I will show you how to change that. So you go to Render Properties and in Render Properties you have something called Light Path and here you have Max Bounces. You have a few settings from default by clicking here where you can select Direct Light, Full Global Illumination and Limited Global Illumination. You also have a default value and if we click at the default value and I do a new render, you will see that now I see through the glass. However, some part of the glass is still black in the edges here. So if you would like to have it completely transparent, then you will select full global illumination. And if I now render everything, you will get a completely different lighting because now you have bounces on transmission and everything. But what you should think about here is that we are working with transmission when it comes to see-through material, not transparency. You can see here that it says transparency, but transparency is more that uh, you don't have any material at all. It's just to see through it. But when you're working with glass, for instance, you have some type of refraction. The light will bend in the material and it will be scattered in the material. In all those cases where you can see through it, but something happens with the light in that material, you work with transmission, not transparency. So even if I put transparency to zero, you will see through the glass here. We can start with using this full global illumination. You don't need it to get rid of the fireflies. This is just to learn how to get the glass transparent so you can see through it. But now we will concentrate on the fireflies. And the first thing we would like to get rid of is all these very, very bright spots you can see here. We have one, two, three, four, five very, very bright spots. These things not that, but these things here, they will not disappear even if you do like 100,000 samples. They will never, never go away. So we need to fix it. And the reason for it is that we are using two small light sources. We should use bigger light sources. So I will change that. I have a few lamps here and I will change them. So if I go to the Object Data Properties tab, and change the size to 2 meters instead of 0 0.2 for each of these. Everything will now be bigger. I go here to render view so you can see what happens. Because when I change this, you will also get a lot more light because now it's 10 times bigger all these areas. So it could also be so that we of course need to lower the power a bit. So I will take it down to at least a half of this. So I put 1000 on this one. And I put 500 on this one. And I continue until I'm finished with all that. And then I go to slot number two and do a new re rendering so we can compare. So now we have a new rendering with bigger lamps. So if we look at the first one, we have this. And if we look at the second one, we have this. It looks more uh, noisy and everything, but what we should think about here, do we have big white spots that will never disappear? No, they are not here anymore. You can't see any spots on this area, but on this area, you have all these spots here. 
So already this, even if you have a very noisy image, is much better than the, the form image. We can also see now when we have increased the size of the light, we may have to move them a bit. So if I go here and look a bit what we have, uh, then I have the camera here. So I believe if we move this up, I can go to camera view so we can see light source, this one. G set, move it up. Okay, so then we don't have that in the way anymore. I will do just a short re-render so we have everything in place. So now I have a re-render and we don't have that thing here. We still have some reflection here, but that is okay. Okay, so that was the first step. The next step is, if we go back to these render properties, is to check on the clamping. And right now, when it's zero, we are not clamping anything. But if I change those value, we will filter the light, we will clamp the light, which means that everything that is brighter than the number we will put here will go away. So if we use a low number, almost all light will disappear. If we use a high number, just that number, just that light that is higher than that number will disappear. So zero should mean that we have no light, but zero means in this case that everything is off. So we should start with a high number like 10 and then work the, our way down. So if I now change this to slot number three and I change indirect light to 10 and do a new render, you will see that the big difference between slot number two, where we have all these really, really bright things and so much noise compared to slot number three, where these things goes away. So we have now taken away all those really bright spots and by that also the fireflies. However, as soon as we do some changes in this uh, render properties tab, we will take away something of the realistic feeling. So don't manipulate too much with, with things. Okay, so now we are getting closer and closer. The next thing I would like to take away is this over bright thing here and that I can do with the direct clamping because the light that goes directly from uh, the light source into the material will be affected over the direct light. I don't need to change that so much but I can put it to like five or something like that and I will do a render on slot number five just so you can compare again. So now we've done this. This is with the clamping for direct light and this is without. So you can see now that this is a little bit too bright, too much power of the light coming here. So we can change the power of the light of course as well, but right now is just training on how we should take away fireflies. So I will do it uh, with this way, in this way instead. So here you can see, now we have taken that away a bit. And when we are in this situation, then we don't have any real fireflies to say. We only have noise. And when we have a noise, then we come to the next step and that is to increase the amount of samples. So in this case, I work with uh, 128 in render. I will go to slot number six and I will change this to 1024 instead and do a new render. Okay, so now we have rendered with high samples, so we can compare again, low amount of samples, and now we changed it to high amount of samples. And it's almost perfect, but still we have some noise. And when we have an image that is this good, then it's time to do some changes in the post-production of the image. And that we can do in different ways. So in slot number seven, I will show you the old denoise away. So you go to the viewer layer properties and you go down to denoising. And now you can render again. And here's the result using denoiser. 
If you now compare slot number six, then you can see that here we have a lot of noise still. But if we use slot number seven, which means that we use the noise, we don't have that. On the other hand, we have like smudge on the image here. And that is because the noise will have to blur things out a bit. And when you do that, you get this noise or this uh, smudge here, but you get rid of the noise. So if you use enough samples, or that smudge will be very small, but if you use a few amount of samples, it will be very, very visible. So we should not use too few samples when using the noise. I will do a comparison again, where I go down with uh, the render time to 128, but I will use the noise still and put that as slot number eight, so you can see the difference again. So I do that and you will see what happens. So now I'm using only 128 as samples. And you can see it's really, really ag ugly in this part here, if you compare to the other one that we had. So even if you had have the tool denoiser, don't use it without uh, having a good amount of samples in your render. You should have a base that is good before you're using the uh, denoiser. This was the one of the methods to use denoise. I will show you the other method. So right now I go back to having uh, 1024 as render, but I will change in the view layer properties. So I take away denoising here, but I see so I have denoising data checked. That one should be checked. And now I will use the compositor to do this denoising. So first of all, I go to slot number eight and I do a new render for that one. So now we have this still not using the denoiser. We should go to compositing. So I click on compositing here and I select use nodes and I also be sure so I see the image editor here and that I can have the render result. So this is the render result. And now I add so I have something as an output. Uh, normally you get this but I removed it uh, before. So I just put it in here. So I have an input and I have a render layer and I put the image into this one and as soon as I do that you get back what we had before. So this is the render result and we are now going through the compositor since we have used nodes here. So what you do now is you press shift A and then you go to filter and in filter you have something called denoise. So you can put that in and you can do like this. Just put it in here and then you have a denoised image. So that is after and this is before. So if you look a bit closer, we have the noise here now and going through the denoise, we have the denoise removed. We have some things here, but not so much. Uh, so in some cases, this will be working better than using the other denoiser. Then another way to, to use this one, and that is to remove image here and instead use the noise image into here using the denoising normal into here and using the noising albedo into here and then we get this result and in the most in most cases this result using those three will give you a better result than just taking the image in like this but that depends on how much reflection you have, what type of material and so on. So you have to try a little bit and see what, what works for you. Then you can do another fix on the compositor as well. If you still have a few uh, fireflies, I don't think you should have it now, but if you have it, you can do something else. So I take away the denoise here and I will now go to Shift A again, filter, and here I have the speckle. The speckle will check for the neighbors 
and if the, the difference between the pixels are too big then it will smoothen it out to have like one image instead or one type of pixel instead so if I now move this to image here and put that up here so uh, in this case we don't have so many fireflies left since we did all the pre-work so this buckle doesn't do so much here we can change the threshold so if we take it down you can see you get everything a bit blurred here because now this speckle also try to smooth things out and you can decide how much of the neighbors that should be uh, involved or not so if you have one you see it's a rather sharp image and then you can go down and as soon as you go down you get a bit uh, worse and then you can play with these factors and you can also decide if you should use the complete the speckle packet so to say or if you should use a little bit less using the factor here so that is also something you can use but the noise is the new one and is using some type of AI to make everything working perfectly when you should take away the fireflies uh, but in some cases it works better with the old denoiser in some cases this works best in some cases we can use only this speckle so you have to try a little bit and see what works best for you in this environment so some difference this is much better I believe than this horrible thing that we started with and we didn't change anything more than the light and of course the light means a lot but it's mostly it's just settings that we changed during the way to make it better uh, all the way up to to here so hopefully now you know how to get rid of all those fireflies and what workflow you should have to make it happen see you in next session bye for now